The goal of asset liability management is to match the assets and liabilities of a bank so you don't have any adverse changes to the bank's net interest income or the economic value of the bank's equity. Remember how we talked about the earning gap and the duration gap? With the earning gap, we said that the bank is trying to manage the risk that interest rates will change and that net interest income might decline. Okay, and then we talked about with the duration gap that the bank was trying to reduce the duration gap so that its equity then fluctuate wildly along with changes in interest rates. Okay, so this is what we're doing with asset liability management. We're trying to avoid uh, hits to the bank's profit and hits to the bank's uh, economic value of its equity, the, the, the value of the firm. Okay, so net interest income and economic value of equity are two of the most important metrics in asset liability management. And we can use them to quantify the effects of interest rate risk and so forth. But let me first show you how they're calculated. Okay, so here's how you calculate net interest income. So you take the interest income from assets and subtract interest expense from the bank's liability. So it's pretty straightforward. Okay. Now, if you have a commercial bank that engages heavily in lending, okay, fixed rate mortgages, floating rate, whatever, they're doing a lot of lending, whether it be commercial, residential, they're doing a lot of lending, the net interest income is going to be the major component of that bank's net income. Okay, so this is very important, net interest income. Now, economic value of equity is simply the economic value of the bank's assets minus the economic value of its liabilities. Okay, so the bank is trying to protect itself with asset liability management, okay, trying to solve those asset liability mismatch problems so that changes in interest rates don't have end up with a big hit uh, to the bank's net interest income, wiping it out, or in worst case scenario, you know, having a really hit big hit to the bank's uh, value of its equity, right? So it's trying to protect the value of the firm, trying to protect the profit, okay? Now, as just a recap, we had said that we're trying to manage the sources of funding of the bank, and sources of funding are liabilities. So these are the liabilities. We're trying to manage those liabilities and uses of funding, okay? How, how the bank deploys that capital. These are the assets, okay, lending, Okay, so the goal of ALM, we're trying to manage these sources of funding and uses of funding, the assets and liabilities, so the net, inc net interest income and economic value of the bank's equity don't fall below certain thresholds that the executive team has deemed to be acceptable. Now, both net interest income and the economic value of equity, we can use them to, to say, okay, what would be the effect of a change in interest rates of 50 basis points or 80 basis points, things like that, okay? So we can, we can quantify the effects of interest rate risk, and we're going to talk about that. I'm going to make some videos where I'll actually show you how we would do that. However, net interest income and economic value equity, even though they're incredibly important metrics for asset liability management, they can't be used to measure liquidity risk, okay? So we're going to talk later. We'll I'll have a video about value at risk, and we'll talk about how a bank would do stress testing and look at hypothetical scenarios and stuff, come up with a contingency plan, a contingency plan for dealing with liquidity risk.